Hi everyone and welcome. Victron released a news bulletin early July introducing a new product, the GX IO Extender 150. According to the news article, it's a compact solution to expand the number of inputs, outputs and relays on a GX device. I will put a link to the news bulletin down below. It is a much requested solution, they say. Well, I can see why. The Serbo GX has got a lot of communication options and support for all kinds of Victron devices and even quite some third-party devices. But it doesn't have a lot of outputs. I suppose its intention is controlling your Victron gear and reading some sensors and stuff. On the output side, there's two relays, that's it. And they are only rated 125 volts AC, so you can't switch mains power devices with them. At least not in most parts of the world. I have quite some Victron gear and I have been using a Serbo GX for some time now. It's a great piece of kit, but like I said, the output options are very limited. So you can imagine I got curious about this GX IO extender device and I ordered one. So what exactly can it do? First of all, you connect it to your GX device via USB. The device is USB powered, so you don't need to connect it to your battery voltage or any other power source. The number of USB connections on a GX device is limited, so it might be good to know that you can expand the number of USB ports using a USB hub. You would probably want to get a powered one though. The device offers 8 digital IOs, 4 pulse width modulated channels, 2 latching relays and a solid state switch. Let's dive a little bit deeper. The 8 IOs are divided in two groups of 4. Each group is configurable to be either input or output. So you can have 8 outputs, 4 outputs and 4 inputs, or 8 inputs. Those are the options. If you need 5 outputs and 1 input, you're out of luck. Well, you could buy an extra GXIO extender because that's actually supported. And in some cases it might even be handy to reduce cabling. The outputs are 5 volts and they can source a maximum of 4 milliamps, so you need some kind of driver if you want to switch anything useful. The inputs are 5 volts as well, and you have to be careful with that. Anything above 5.5 volts can cause permanent damage to your device. The PWM signals are at 5 volt too, so same as the digital outputs, you will need some kind of driver to drive your LEDs for instance. The relays are latching. And that means that they will hold their position if the device is powered off or rebooted or something like that. That's unlike a normal relay because a normal relay will switch to its default off position whenever there's no power. And the relay contacts can handle 250 volts AC. So with this device you can actually switch mains powered devices. If the current is not too big that is. It can handle up to half an amp at 250 volts. The solid state switch can only switch DC currents, of course, and it can handle up to 4 amps at maximum 70 volts DC. It's good to know that all IOs, not just the relays, but the other IOs as well, are isolated from the USB and thus from your GX device. So if you do stupid things with it, you can blow up your IO extender, but not your GX device. More details are in the datasheet and I will link that below as well. Now let's see what's in the box. The JXIO Extender 150 has arrived. This is the box, it's rather small actually. Let's see what's inside. Product labels. Nothing interesting there, I suppose. A bag with connectors. These are the same type as uh, you get with the Serbo GX. Um, you can just uh, stick a wire in there. If you push the orange thingies then the wire will get released. We have two types of connectors. Um, four of them uh, sorry, three of them have uh, eight connections. So I suppose that's for the 
eight IOs and one is for the PWM outputs. And we have uh, three connectors that are different. These have only three connections each and they are a lot bigger. So I suppose this is for the higher current connections, the two relays and the solid state relay. Then the device itself. On this side there are um, the digital IOs 2 times 4 and the PWM output. With these dip switches you can select whether these two blocks of connections are used as inputs or outputs. There are indicator LEDs so you can see what's going on uh, on this side as well. The relay connections and the solid state switch. On this side we have the USB connection. Uh, it's a fairly beefy uh, connection to be honest, the cable. Um, so yeah, not really much to say about this. Um, let's hook it up. We are now in my RV and as you can see I've got quite some Victron gear on this wall already. Um, but luckily there is a small spot over there where I can put the GX IO extender. Let me put you guys on a tripod and uh, go ahead with the installation. I'm going to put the I.O. extender right over here. Um, I have to keep this area clear because over here I have an access panel uh, for some fuses. Uh, let me screw it to the wall real quick. The uh, device has got three, four, sorry, four mounting holes. Um, unless you are expecting a storm indoors, that seems a little bit overkill to me. Um, so I'm only using two screws. Let me get the USB cable. Um, as you can see here, I've got this uh, USB hub because the uh, the Serbo GX only has three USB connections. Um, one is connected to the touchscreen uh, because I'm not using the original Victron uh, touchscreen that uses the, um, the HDMI connector uh, for the touch uh, screen as well. Um, so I need a USB port for the uh, for the touch uh, part of the of the screen. Then there's another one for the power to the to the screen. And actually, you cannot use it for anything else. Um, it is a USB connector, but the data lines are not connected, so it's basically just a power outlet. And the other one is connect connected to um, the box I've got over here. Um, and that is um, a box that uh, allows me to connect four uh, VE Direct uh, devices. And uh, basically lets me connect it through uh, USB rather than and the V direct ports that are on the servo. So I'm going to hook up the IO extender um, to the USB hub I have over here. As you see, uh, it immediately comes to life. This is the first time I'm powering it up actually. Let me tidy up this cable and let's take a look uh, in the VRM portal to see if anything has changed. I went to the VRM portal and I totally expected something to show up there, but unfortunately it didn't. And then I opened the remote console um, to see if I need to configure something. And then it dawned me that it is a new product I am installing. And I haven't updated the firmware in a while. So if I go to firmware, you can see I am running version 3.54. That is not the most recent version. As you can see, the most recent is 3.63. I'm going to install it and I will be right back. We're back in the VRM portal after the firmware update of the Serbo GX. 
let's check if we can see any controls. These controls are all the same. This has been here before. Uh, these uh, switches control the relays that are built into the Serbo GX itself, not the I.O. extender. So nothing new here. Let's open the remote console. And here we can see something different because this one used to be here and this controls all the uh, stuff that already existed. But this one is new. And apparently these are all the uh, controls for the I.O. extender. But this screen is a little bit cluttered. So let's see if we can clean that up a little. We go to settings, devices. We click on the I.O. extender that wasn't there before. Here are all the I.O.s that are available. Go to setup. Let's just remove some of them. Show controls. Switch that to off. We do that for the rest as well. I have now removed most of the output options. I left only one per category. So let's go back. Yeah, this is a bit nicer. Um, we can click on this. This is BWM, so it's a slider. This is a relay. I can already hear a tick in the background. Let me set you guys up so you can see what's actually happening. So here is the I.O. extender. As you can see, all LEDs are off except for the two uh, yellow ones. Um, let's switch output one to on. And there it goes. And then we have the PWM. It is off. Now it's on. You can see the LED uh, faintly. And if I turn this slider right, it gets more bright. Switch it off again. Then we have a relay. You can see it turning blue. And off again. And here at the bottom, there is relay number three. That is the solid state relay. And if I turn that on, you can see that LED go on as well. So there you have it. It all works. Uh, you need to run the uh, latest software in order for uh, the GX device to actually recognize the fact that you connected a GX IO. Unfortunately, uh, you cannot uh, control the IOs from the VRM portal, or at least not yet, or maybe I'm doing something wrong. If I am, please let me know in the comments down below. So there you have it. The Victron GX IO Extender 150. It seems like a useful piece of kit. I might actually be doing another video on it once I've hooked it up and uh, can actually control uh, stuff with it. Let me know in the comments down below if you uh, are interested in a video like that. And also let me know if you're interested in a video on all the other blue stuff that is mounted against this wall. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye-bye.